Hello and welcome to the seventh vlog in our English Cabaret vlog series. Click up there to get our playlist for this wonderful series. In our last video, we continued the Dreams of Peace and Freedom tour in four different places important to its story. Thank you so much to Dimmock, Oxford, Barnes and Runnymede. Today, we are going to reveal the artwork for this year's English Cabaret Hour and update you with what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. We have been travelling around more of the UK this week, taking photographs for upcoming projects and spreading the word about dreams of peace and freedom. Look out in the near future for those projects on our YouTube channel. But for now, have a look at some of the footage we took. And why they are important to the story. There are four remaining original copies of the Magna Carta still in evidence today. And during this week, we were on a mission to discover the places they are kept. Two copies are held by the British Library. However, the two other copies are in Salisbury and Lincoln. We visited Salisbury first, where they had a small exhibition dedicated to the historical document. In the gorgeous old chapter house. We visited Lincoln next, where the fourth and final Magna Carta is held. Although it is owned by the cathedral, there is now a permanent cinema and exhibition space to tell you the story of Magna Carta in the castle opposite, which only reopened 11 days ago when we visited. The cathedral was another beautiful building and was probably there when the Magna Carta was sealed in 1215. We had a very interesting day in Norwich, discovering the story of the 14th century mystic or anchorite Dame Julian of Norwich, who provides the text for the last movement of Dreams of Peace and Freedom, All Should Be Well. We visited St Julian's Church and her cell where she wrote Revelations of Divine Love after a long illness where she had visions about God's love. We also saw the cathedral where she is remembered in statues and stained glass around the building. On the Magna Carta trail, we popped up in Bury St Edmunds to see where the Baron swore to force King John to sign the Charter of All Liberties, which led to the creation of the Magna Carta. Although there is little left of the abbey that once stood here, there is a plaque within the ruins that tell the importance of the spot. Our final stop was Grantchester, where Rupert Brooke lived as a student before being called up to fight in the First World War. It is particularly poignant this year, as on the 23rd of April, it is the centenary of his death. Grantchester is a little village outside of Cambridge, and it is not hard to see why he enjoyed living there. He is remembered on the War Memorial and the village's Roll of Honour, and there is a statue of him erected outside his old house. So, his work and life is not forgotten. find out more about how all these component parts weave together into dreams and peace and freedom, go to englishcabaret.co.uk or see our previous vlogs. Now onto the exciting reveal for this year's Edinburgh Fringe image for English Cabaret Hour 2015. We're excited to share it with you for the first time. And here it is. Thanks so much to MHM Grax a wonderful design that encompasses lots of the elements of this year's show. That's it for today's vlog. Be sure to catch up with all the news on our social links. And we'll see you again in two weeks time for another vlog. Bye! Goodbye! <laughs>
Doot, doot, doot.